Hey, good morning, everybody. It is Pastor Randy here with Made Free Church. I hope you guys are having a great, great morning. I know I am. Uh, you know, it's always good to, you know, wake up in the morning and, uh, you know, get with Jesus, man, and have a cup of coffee. You know, um, I think it's very, very important that uh, you guys get on a routine and do that every morning. Um, but anyway. I want to, uh, uh, good morning. I want to welcome everybody to the Made Free Church online Bible study. You know, uh, we're looking at today, uh, 1 Samuel 25, verses 1 through 8. Uh, we finished chapter 24 yesterday. So please open your Bibles if you'd like. You know, whether you're joining us on Facebook, YouTube, or one of our podcasting platforms, I am delighted and we are delighted to have you uh, for another engaging uh, uh bible study right uh you know uh before we dive into scripture today you know let's take a moment to connect with god let's let's open in prayer heaven dear heavenly father we just come before you you know with grateful hearts and thankful for the opportunity to gather virtually here uh at made free uh we seek your presence and guidance as we explore your word today may your insights that we gain lead us to a deeper understanding of your wisdom and grace lord we put on the full armor of god which it says in ephesians 6 10 through 20 lord we just ask that you rebuild the hedges of protection and those shields around us today lord and we just ask lord that you send your legion of angels down to fight for us and with us heavenly father and we thank you for all that you do in our lives lord and uh we just sat i just ask that you just get me out of the way and let your word go forward lord fill us today with your holy spirit today god and bless our hands and feet as we go to work or whatever we do. Lord, thank you for all that you do. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, guys. So now let's turn our attention, you know, to the word of God, right? Uh, again, we're going to be in for Samuel 25, verses 1 uh, through 8, verses 1 through 8. Uh, so as we embark on this journey through the pages of David's life, amen. So it says in verse one, now Samuel died and Israel assembled to mourn for him and they buried him in his house at Ramah. Then David rose and went down to the wilderness of Paran. And there was a man, Moan, whose business was uh, in Carmel. Uh, the man was very rich. He had 3000 sheep and a thousand goats and he was shearing his sheep in Carmel. Now. The name of the man was Nabal, and the name of his wife was Abigail. The woman was discerning and beautiful, but the man was harsh and badly behaved, and he was a, uh, a Calebite. David heard in the wilderness that Nabal was shearing his sheep. So David sent 10 young men, and David said to the young man, go up to Carmel, go to Nabal, and greet him in my name. And thus you shall greet him. Peace be to you and peace to your house and peace be to all that you have. I hear that you have shears. Now your shepherds have been with us and we did them no harm and they missed nothing uh, all the time that we were in Carmel. Ask your young, young men and they will tell you. Therefore, my young men, uh, find favor in your eyes for we come on feast day. Please give us whatever you have at hand to your servants and your son, David. So I'm going to give you kind of a brief overview, then we're going to get into it. So in the tapestry of David's life, right? First Samuel 25 stands out as a significant chapter, right? It unfolds during a challenging period painting a, a vivid picture of David's experience, you know, in the wilderness, right? So to grasp the essence of this passage, we need to step into David's shoes, right? You know, put ourselves there, not put ourselves like David, like, oh, we're David and this is happening. No, don't, you don't do it, but just put us, you know, just think about, you know, put yourself in his shoes and, and try to, 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 to really, not experience what he experienced, but understand what he experienced, right? You know, who who was, he wasn't even uh, a crown king, but was anointed by Samuel awaiting God's timing. You know, I see at, at this juncture, David himself uh, uh, 
uh, he was he finds himself on the cusp of de a destiny, right? The weight of God promise rest on his shoulders. And yet the road to kingship was fraught with uncertainty. You know, it's a pivotal moment, right? It's a time waiting and testing. David navigates the intricate paths of God's plan in his life. You know, the, the wilderness serves as a backdrop for the chapter, right? both physically and metaphorically, right? David, once celebrated as a hero, slain Goliath, right? Now roams the desolate, the desolate terrain, evading pursuit of, of Saul. You know, the wilderness becomes a classroom where David learns, you know, uh, lessons of faith, trust, and reliance on God's pro providence, right? And, and, and as we unfold the ancient narratives of 1 Samuel 25. It is essential to recognize the timeless relevance of David's wilderness experience to our own lives. You know, in the tapestry of our, our existence, you know, we too encounter wilderness moments, seasons of uncertainties, challenges, and difficult relationships. You know, life's wilderness is where we grapple with the unknown. We face adversities and we seek God's guidance. You know, it, it, it is in these moments that lessons, uh, that, that the lessons David really learned uh, become a, be a beacon for us, guiding us through the complexity of our own journeys. You know, navigating challenging relationship is a universal experience. You know, just as David faced hostility from Nabal, we encounter individuals who, may not understand or appreciate our journey. You know, it could be a coworker, right? It could a family member, a friend, right? The wilderness is not just a physical place, but a state of being, a metaphor for trials and tribulations we all encounter. You know, so as we embark on the exploration of 1 Samuel 25, let us open our hearts to the wisdom hidden within the ancient text. You know, may the insights glean today empower us to face our own wilderness moments with faith, uh, resilience, and wisdom that comes from seeking God's guidance. Amen. So as we dive into this, this passage, right, we encounter, you know, a tapestry of, of, of characters, right? Nabal, Abigail. And David, each playing a distinct role in this intricate tale, right? This section serves as a portal into the dynamics of their lives, right? Offering a glimpse into the complex interplay of wealth, attitudes, and cultural expectations. Now, Nabal, whose name means fool in Hebrew, emerges as a central figure in this passage. Abigail, his wife, stands in stark contrast with her wisdom and virtue while david navigating the wilderness seeks provisions and understanding in the unexpected place now nabal is introduced as a man of wealth you know owning flocks and herds in the region of moan right but but his material prosperity is accompanied by a severe lack of wisdom and discernment the name nabal foreshadows his character right uh, as as he lives up to the implications of folly his actions and decisions are driven by impulsiveness and lack of consideration for others, right? Do we have people like that in our lives? I do, you know. Um, Nabal, you know, uh, Nabal's influence is not just a mere detail, but a crucial aspect of his character, right? His vast flocks and herds paint a picture of, of, of abundance, right? Making him a man of substantial means, within the societal context of that time. Now, the abundance of his possession sets the stage for a stark contrast between material wealth and spiritual poverty. You know, despite David's uh, honorable and respectful request for provisions, you know, Nabal responds in disdain and arrogance. You know, his, his attitude towards David, who is on the run from Saul seeking sustenance, is one of insolence and ingratitude. Nabal's refusal to extend hospitality, we'll see that tomorrow, but we're just, I'm just doing some, some context for you, right? It, it, it is not only his lack of empathy, but his failure to recognize David's anointing and divine calling upon his life. 
you know, we have those people in our lives today. Everybody does. You know, we're supposed to be acting different. We're supposed to be being different. You know, and we're supposed to be Christ-like, like becoming image, you know, we're image bearers of God, right? But we're supposed to be coming in the image of the son, Jesus Christ. So in the wilderness, you know, David finds himself vulnerable in a vulnerable position, right? Seeking sustenance from his men, from his men for his men and, and himself, instead of resorting to force or taking matters into his own hands, he approaches Nabal with humility and respect. His request for provisions ref reflects his reliance on the principle of, 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 of uh, uh, his reliance, you know, it, it really, it's, it's embedded in the cultural norms of that time, right? In ancient Israelite history, the culture expectation of hospitality is deeply ingrained, you know, offering assistance and support to travelers, especially those in need was considered a moral duty, right? That this culture norm extended to the provisions of food, shelter, and other necessities. David, aware of, it, of this cultural context, approaches the ball with the expectation of receiving a customary hospitality to extend to a respected figure, right? You know, do, do we do that today? You know, we don't. We, we don't extend, you know, hospitality to those that are in need. You know, some of us do, but most of us don't. Why is that? You know, are you setting hospitality? Are you ex extending, you know, your love and support and prayers and stuff to the homeless? You know, yeah, they're going to go, if you give them money, they're going to go buy alcohol and drugs. You, you know what I mean? That's, that's what, that's what they do. That's the only thing they know. And the enemy has them. But my, my thing is, is that, you know, you don't let your, 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 your left hand know what your right hand doing. Now, do I give money to homeless? No, but I will buy them food, you know, because you know, God, God's just going to bless that dude. You know what I mean? He's going to bless that person with food and sustenance, you know, um, it, it's just going to be cool. Right. So, you know, we need to, to get back to being loving and caring to one another, you know, um, it's just, it, it's just something that we, we need to do guys. You know what I mean? We really, really need to do it. It needs to happen. So, Nabal's refusal to extend this, un, this expected generosity not only violates the cultural norms, but it also expo exposes the moral and spiritual bankruptcy of his character. The cultural backdrop, you know, serves as a, a crucial element in understanding the gravity of Nabal's actions and righteousness of David's response. You know, as we navigate the intricacies of this passage, let us reflect on the characters involved and consider, you know, how the attitudes towards wealth, hospitality, and discernment align with the timeless principles embedded in this narrative. You know, the introspection of these characters though the intersection of these characters right illuminates not only the dynamics of human interaction but also the impact of cultural expectations and moral conduct right so in in, in this narrative abigail emerges as the beacon of wisdom and virtue providing a stark contrast to the folly of her husband nabal right as we dive into her character and actions and, and the invaluable lessons that she imparts, we witness the impact of wisdom and humility and navigating the, the complexities of life. Now, Abigail's whose name means source of joy or my father or my father's joy inter, uh, is introduced as the wife of Nabal, right? Yet her qualities are, stand in stark contrast to the foolishness associated with her husband's name. Abigail is portrayed as a woman of beauty, intelligence, and most importantly, wisdom. Her presence in the narrative becomes a pivotal force in steering the course of events. Now, when, 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 when confronted with David's request, 
for provisions. Abigail's response is marked with humility, discernment, and deep understanding of the situation. Her actions, you know, not only reveal her character, but also the wisdom that sets her apart as a remarkable figure in the biblical narrative. You know, uh, Abigail's humility is evident from the moment she receives the news of David's request. And we'll see that tomorrow, right? You know, instead of, of reacting with pride and, 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 and obstinance, she takes swift and decisive action, right? She recognizes the potential consequences of Nabal's folly and immediately sets out to intercede. You know, I, Abigail's humility is not a sign of weakness, but it, it, it is a testament to her strength of her character. Right. A strength rooted in deep understanding of the principles of righteousness and justice. <laughs> right. Her wisdom shines through as as she navigates the delicate task of appeasing David without condemning her husband outright. You know, Abigail chooses a path of reconciliation, right, seeking to advert the, the impending disaster through diplomatic and respectful communication. Her wisdom lies not only in her ability to recognize the right course of action, but her skillful execution of it. You know, Abigail's wisdom, you know, is is further underscored by her understanding of David's predicament. Right. She recognizes David's anointing by Samuel and the divine calling upon his life. Right. In addressing David, she acknowledges his elevated status and refrains from demeaning him right abigail perceives the significance of aligning with righteousness even if it means going against her own husband's actions so abigail's understanding goes really goes beyond the immediate circumstances she grasps the broader implications and aligning with god's chosen one you know in doing so she might not only she 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 not only displays empathy for David's plight, but aligns herself with the divine purpose unfolding in the tumultuous events of the time. So Abigail's role uh, in, in this narrative serves as a, a powerful reminder of the importance of seeking and providing uh, 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 wise counsel, especially in moments of difficulty and conflict. Right. Her intervention prevents potential bloodshed and demonstrates the power of wisdom in the face of impending disaster. You know, encouraging the congregation to emulate Abigail's example, we're reminded of the profound impact that wise counsel can have on our lives. Right. In, in times of adversity, seeking the guidance of those who embody humility and wisdom becomes crucial. You know, being vessels of wisdom for others is a responsibility that we all should embrace willingly you know and as we navigate the complexities of our own lives let us heed the lessons of abigail's story seek out count uh, uh seek out the counsel of those who embody humility and wisdom you know and being vessels of wise counsel for others Right. And in doing so, we mirror the principles of righteousness and justice that Abigail exemplified in her interactions with David. You know, the, the wisdom of Abigail inspires us to navigate the intricate tapestry of our lives with humility, discernment and deep understanding of the divine purpose unfolding in our midst. Let us be a community that seeks and provides wise counsel, ensuring that the light of wisdom dispels the shadow of folly in our journey. You know, and, and, and what's, the, what's the lessons for today, right? So as we glean from, the in, from this, this narrative, right, the lessons embedded within the interactions with Nabal and, and Abigail and David resonate with a remarkable relevance in our lives today. You know, so let's explore the lessons, drawing wisdom from the pages of scripture that guide us identifying, responding, and overcoming Nabal's own journey, right? In the tapestry of our relationships, man, you know, our, our, we often encounter individuals whose attitudes and echoes, right, uh, actions echo the folly of Nabal, right? Identifying these Nabals is a crucial step in navigating the challenges they present. 
you know, whether you're, you be a colleague, a family member, or a friend, recognizing challenging uh, personalities requires discernment and keen understanding of their motivations. You know, it may manifest in, in individuals' arrogance, you know, lack of empathy and the willingness uh, and, and the unwillingness to extend support in times of need. Understanding the traits associated with Nabal allows us to navigate relationships with increased awareness, fostering an environment where wisdom and grace prevail. You know, in, in the face of challenging responsibility, our response matters, right? Cultivating the spirit of, of, of Abigail becomes paramount, right? An embodiment of humility and wisdom that seeks reconciliation rather than confrontation. Abigail's example challenges us to rise above the immediate emotions and frustrations or anger and respond with grace. You know, responding with wisdom involves choosing our battles wisely and adopting a peaceable attitude. Abigail's di diplomacy and navigating the tensions between David and Nabal serves as a blueprint for us. By, by responding with grace and wisdom, we not only diffuse the, the, the potential conflicts, but we also create opportunities for growth and understanding in our relationships, right? That the central to the spirit of Abigail is the cultivation of humility and wisdom. You know, developing humility involves recognizing our own vulnerable vulnerabilities and limitations. It's an acknowledgement that we too are imperfect beings in need of grace. Wisdom, on the other hand, is the ability to apply uh, knowledge discerningly, right? Especially in challenging situations. Being peacemaker uh, in, in challenging relationship requires us to set aside our pride and ego, choosing the path of understanding and reconciliation. It involves active listening, empathy, and commitment to finding common ground. Right. By embodying the, the, the humility and wisdom exemplified by Abigail, we become instruments of peace amidst the conflict. Right. Just as David found himself in the wilderness, you're right, facing uncertainty and seeking provision. We, too, encounter metaphorical wilderness and experiences in our own lives. Right. These moments may be characterized by challenges, struggles and a sense of isolation. And in times, the narrative encourages us to trust in God's guidance and provision. You know, emphasizing reliance on God's guidance and provision doesn't mean passivity, but rather an active trust that aligns our actions with his will. You know, just as David sought provisions with humility, we're called to to navigate our challenges with faith that transcends our circumstances. You know, trusting in God's provision in the wilderness involves, you know, surrendering our anxieties and leaning on his wisdom, knowing that he is our ultimate source of guidance and sustenance. You know, the, the, the lessons here in this passage provide a roadmap of navigating the complexities of our relationships and our and, and challenges, you know, by identifying the balls and responding with grace and wisdom you know, cultivating a spirit of Abigail and trusting in God's provision in the wilderness, right? We can, we can journey through life's uncertainties with resilience, right? Humility and deep reliance on the wisdom that transcends time. May these lessons guide us in fostering relationships marked by grace, understanding, and steadfast trust in the God who leads us through every wilderness. As we immerse ourselves, in the lessons drawn from from this passage is paramount to bridge the gap between the ancient narratives and our co our contemporary lives the application of these insights become a journey that shapes how we navigate our relationships you know so let's let's dive into the practical ways uh that that we that we can respond to this wisdom in fostering you know a uh, 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 a sense you know uh, fostering you know, uh, a community or fostering in your community marked by humility, grace, and divine guidance. So the first step towards applying these lessons in this passage is invite, you know, I want to, I want you, I want to invite you guys, you know, into a personal, a moment of personal reflection. 
you know, I want to encourage each and every one of you to introspect, to look inside, examining the landscape of your own relationships. You know, this reflection involves an honest assessment of the interactions with others, identifying moments of grace, instances of conflict, and recognizing the challenging personalities akin to Nabal. Encur I, you know, I want to encourage you guys to ponder, you know, how they respond to such challenges, right? You know what I mean? Ha ha have, have you guys embodied the spirit of Abigail, you know, responding with humility and wisdom? Or, or, or have you mirrored the folly of Nabal in your own actions, right? You know, this, this introspective or looking in journey allows for growth fostering a deeper understanding of oneself and the dynamics at play in various relationships. You know, following a personal reflection, you know, I want to, I want to guide you guys in a collective prayer for wisdom and grace, you know, recognizing the need for divine guidance and navigating the challenging relationships, right? In this moment of prayer, you know, uh, you know, I want you guys to to lift up specific relationships or situation where wisdom and grace is required. You know, I want you guys to pray for discernment to identifying challenging personalities. Seek divine insight to respond with humility and understanding. I want you guys to ask God for guidance, uh, you know, in, in emulating the spirit of Abigail you know, becoming peacemakers in a challenging relationships, right? And, and this, this guys, this prayer, right? Uh, not only aligns you with the biblical principles discussed, but it also fosters a sense of unity and shared reliance on God's wisdom. So pray for these individuals, you know, uh, that's what we're supposed to do. You know, that's what we're supposed to do is pray for those that, that challenge us. I, I, you know, I pray for a couple of people every day, you know, and, uh, um, it, you know, this is what we need to do. We need to be praying for them, you know? So as we, you know, come to a close, uh, in this exploration of first Samuel 25, you know, um, I want to, I want you guys to understand the importance of wisdom and grace in your daily interactions. Right. I want to remind you that the lessons learned here uh, from the scripture is not just historical anecdotes, but a but living principles that shape the very fabric of our lives and communities. You know, I want to reiterate the significance of humility and wisdom in dealing with challenging personalities, you know, emphasizing that embodying the spirit of Abigail or, you know, embodying the spirit of of, of of christ transforms conflicts into opportunities for growth and reconciliation you know a drawing attention to the ongoing journey of seeking god's provision in the wilderness of life where his guidance becomes a the compass of navigating through uncertainties you know i want to close with a reminder guys the embodiment of these principles creates an environment of grace that where grace is abundance, understanding prevails and relationships flourish. But I want to encourage you guys to carry these lessons beyond this virtual sanctuary and into your homes, your workplaces, and also into your communities. The application and response to, this, to, to the teachings here go way beyond just mere intellectual understanding, right? they call for a tangible transformation in the way that we approach relationships you know the personal reflection prayer for divine guidance and closing remarks that reinforce the importance of wisdom and grace right the congregation is poised you know to and you know you guys are poised uh uh not, <laughs> you guys are poised to embrace a journey of growth fostering a, a community marked by the power of biblical principles in your daily lives, right? Fostering a community or fostering, uh, 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 yeah, fostering a community marked with the power of biblical principles, right? So may these reflections and prayers, you know, cat, uh, catalyze a ripple effect, right? for positive change in the relationships of each individual creating 
a tapestry of grace and wisdom with the broader community of faith, right? So as we draw the curtains of this exploration uh, here in 1 Samuel 25 and the lessons that's captured within, let us reflect on the enduring wisdom that has emulated our understanding and navigating relationships and challenges. See, the narrative David, Nabal, and Abigail transcends the boundaries of time, offering us timeless principles that resonate with the intricacies of our own journeys. Now, consider the, the, these moments, right? The challenges faced by David in the wilderness, the obstinance of Nabal, the wisdom and grace exuded by Abigail. These elements intertwine to form the narrative that mirrors our own experiences, moments of uncertainty, encounters with challenging personalities, and the power of humility and wisdom. You know, as we conclude our time together, you know, uh, let me extend a heartfelt blessing to each and every individual here in this community, online community, right? May the, may the, may the wisdom gleaned from scriptures permeate every facet of your life, right? Guiding you through the complexities of relationships and challenges. And, and, and I, you know, I may, may you be empowered to identify the Nabals in your life, responding with grace and wisdom and cultivating a spirit of Abigail in your interactions. Now let us bow our heads and pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you with hearts filled with gratitude for the wisdom and grace imparted in the in in through your exploration of your word you know as we go forth you know uh uh from this virtual sanctuary you know may the lessons learned here resonate in our minds and hearts heavenly father grant us discernments to navigate the challenging relationships with humility and wisdom to respond with grace we lift up those moments of uncertainty those metaphorical wildernesses that we experience that each of us encounter in those times may we trust in your provision right seeking your guidance with unwavering faith just as david found sustenance and support in unexpected places may we too experience uh, your divine provision in our lives and as we part ways lord let us let the spirit of abigail guide us you know may we be peacemakers cultivating understanding and reconciliation in our relationships heavenly father bless each individual with with an abundance of wisdom and grace enabling them to be beacons of light in a world that sometimes feels overshadowed by darkness now may the lord bless you and keep you may the lord make his face shine upon you and gracious to you and may the lord turn his face towards you and give you peace and in 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 lord we just ask for for blessings traveling blessings as we go to school work or whatever we do today lord bless our hands and feet today in jesus name amen uh or in the name of the father the son and the holy spirit amen have you as you navigate this day remember God's presence is steadfast, even in the most challenging situations. And may you find comfort and strength in the assurance that you're not alone. And the lessons, uh, may the lessons learned today become a guiding light to your journey of faith, right? Go in peace, right? Enriched, you know, by the wisdom of scripture and the grace that flows from the eternal wellspring of God's love. Amen. So as we draw these curtains to a close, uh, this moment of reflection, I'm excited to give you guys uh, 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 some, some updates, right? So before we split, guys, just stay tuned right here. Made Free Church website is up, www.madefreechurch.org, which is now live and up, right? So go visit our website, check out what we believe, how we believe. It's www.madefreechurch.org. In addition to the website, you know, I, I have penned a few books, right? That's crafted in the intention of inspiring and deepening your spiritual journey. These books are Reformation Revived, right? 
which is a great book if you want to learn about how we're here today in in not only in this virtual uh, 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 community, but in our church communities. You know what I mean? Why why we have Christianity here in 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 the Western world? You know, and what Martin Luther and Calvin and all these guys did, so we can have what we have today. You know, so go check out that book, uh, Recovery and Redemption, right? Uh, it's a 12 step program view uh, with a biblical lens, overcoming relapse. So if, so if you're struggling with addiction, doesn't matter what it is, Recovery and Redemption is a great book for you. And if you're thinking about relapsing, you're already in relapse mode, right? You know, but you can overcome relapse through uh, the, this, this overcoming relapse that I wrote. Uh, it's a biblical guide. You know, it's just an awesome, I've relapsed several times, you know, and it's just, it's, it's hard. It's hard after you come back from a relapse, trust me. So go and get these books if you're struggling with any kind of addiction, right? Uh, my favorite apostle, one of my favorite apostles, Apostle John, uh, Walking in the Footsteps of Christ, which is a, a, um, a book, a discipleship book, right? And I wrote a 60 day uh, devotional for men and women entitled A Warrior's Heart. And these are all available on Amazon Books and Barnes and Noble. Um, and I do have a book called Walking in His Ways, right? It's a guide to living a biblical life, right? And, and a special treat for the month of January will be available for free on Barnes and Noble. All you got to simply do is that, you know, you got to down the Barnes and Noble mobile app. You got to sign up for a free account. And, you know, uh, when you're when you find the book, right, it's called Walking in His Ways or you find my name right? Simply just use this code at checkout. B is in boy, N is in Nancy, P is in Paul, W is in William, I is in India, H is in Henry, W is in William at checkout, right? Um, and it, you know, and, and, and it'll give you the free book in an ebook form. So you're going to have to download the Nook app as well, but it's a great book. Go check it out. Uh, it's easy to read. It's not that long, uh, but it's a great book. So go check it out. Uh, what makes this endeavor of the of all the proceeds of, from these books throughout the entire year of 2024 will go to supporting causes close to our hearts, right? One of those causes is Tunnels for Two Towers, right? It's Gary Sinise's um, uh, uh, charitable uh, uh, that helps, you know, that that like 1% goes back into Tunnels of, tunnels of Towers, I think. I'm not sure. Don't quote me on that. And the rest go to, you know, supporting and 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 our our veterans, man, who who fought for this country, who can't take care of themselves, right? So we also we also have believers in Christ Fellowship, and believers in Christ Fellowship is a fellowship of men and women who go out every weekend and feed the homeless. You know, we bring church to the encampments throughout San Bernardino County, California, and. It's just a good way for you guys to to be a part of that as well. And we're the established of our women's ranch, right? Mary's ranch, right? And uh, these initiatives that aim to make a positive impact in our communities and beyond. Now, Mary's ranch is a, a discipleship ranch that we're envisioning uh, for women and children. You know, so, uh, you know, we're getting the property. We're, we're doing a lot. So if you guys want to donate to that, you guys can, right? Uh, but if you guys feel moved to make a direct donation, you can do that also on the Made Free Church website, right? We are a nonprofit charitable church and your generosity allows us to continue our mission of spreading God's love and supporting those in need. So please leave your email in the notes sections of your donation so we can send you a tax deductible receipt. Now your prayers are invaluable to us, guys. And I want to express my sincere gratitude for being a part of this online community. Together, we can make a difference and your involvement is crucial to the success of these endeavors. So before we part ways, I have one more request. If you found inspiration in our teachings, right, please consider to take a moment to like, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channels or any of our podcasting platforms. And in doing so, you not only you, you extend our reach and help us share the gospel with a broader audience. Right. So 
your, your simple actions make a significant impact in spreading the message of hope and love. So thank you guys for being here, for your prayers and your support. It's a privilege to walk this journey of faith with each and every one of you. And may you grow in, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And may the seeds planted in your hearts today grow into the, har uh, the harvest of an abundant blessings. God bless you guys. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for this time. We thank you for the opportunity that we get to share your word daily, Lord, to learn, to glean, and to apply what we've learned into our daily lives. Lord, we thank you for all that you do. Lord, thank you for our salvation, Lord, because you can never lose it. We can never lose it. Excuse me. You know, it's so internal, Lord, that you will always, always draw us back when we when we fall. You know, it doesn't matter who you are, if you're a pastor, if you're a deacon, or if you're just a regular Christian, always he will draw you back into his loving grace. Amen. We love you. We worship you and we praise you in Jesus name. Amen. All right, guys. So love you. And we'll be back tomorrow and go in peace.